Good evening and welcome to the Tuesday, November 15th, 2022 Tingsboro School Committee meeting. Please be reminded that these meetings are audio and video recorded. My name is Becky Stanton and I call this meeting to order. We will start with introductions with Nate. Hi, Nate Marino, student representative. Jeff Bowe. Dustin Puma. Good evening, Mike Woodlock, assistant superintendent. Hi, Mike Flanagan, superintendent. Anthony Tenorello. Ryan McMahon. Danielle Athanas. Rob Mullen, from the Senior Business Administrator. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I will seek a motion to approve the November 1st, 2022 School Committee meeting minutes. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? That carries 7-0-0. Uh, citizen time. If we have any citizens that would like to speak, please step right up to the mic. Um, just as a reminder, we do, uh, our policy allows for two minutes, um, and typically the committee does not respond. It's more just, you know, you can share your thoughts. Awesome. I do have a comment. Okay. Um, <clears throat> School committee members, uh, for those of you who do not know who I am, my name is Ryan McDonough. I am a member of Tingsboro High School's class of 2018, and I am the acting president of Tingsboro Community Theater. Um, since the group was registered as a nonprofit in 2021, uh, we have made it our mission to educate and enrich the surrounding community through the performing theater arts. Over the past year or so, we have performed at both the 2021 and 2022 block party, uh, produced our first main stage musical this past summer in Tuck Everlasting, and staged a production of Feathers and Teeth last month, and we are gearing up for our second annual winter cabaret in just a couple of weeks. Uh, we are also working with Chance Lee Joyner of the Tingsboro Public Library to develop a show that will be a part of the Children's Summer Series that will be directed and performed by Tingsboro High students to be performed for the Tingsboro youth. Uh, while we have certainly enjoyed the success that we have experienced with our shows, there have been, certainly been some, uh, some bumps along the way. Being that we are a nonprofit, we rely solely on the generous donations of our supporters and the sponsorships of other community organizations, such as Enterprise Bank. St. Mary Magdalene's Paris Center has been generous enough to allow us to use their facilities for both our summer and fall production rehearsals, asking only for a small donation in return. Uh, we have managed to sustain a level of donation that allows us to continue with our work, but we are in need of assistance on the front of performance space. Our production of Feathers and Teeth was performed just down the hall at the Donald Champer Performing Arts Center, a space that was used only for the hours of 6 to 9 p.m. on Wednesday, October 12th to the 15th, and 1 to 5 p.m. on October 16th. For this total of 16 hours in space, we paid a total of $2,077, which is a pretty steep price tag for a show that only had audiences on the last three days listed, no concessions sold, and a show that was the same date as a Friday night football game, meaning the school was opened already, uh, which I only know because I am an assistant coach of the football team. Now, uh, we are a board that is completely composed of Tingsboro Theater alumni with a large population of current TPS students that partake in our productions. Tingsboro Community Theater presents supplemental performance opportunities, which is especially important with the reduced number of productions being offered by the schools this year. Our main stage musical production is put on during the summer months when school is not in session, and we do not put on shows during the spring months so that there is no conflict and maximum opportunities between the two groups. Uh, my mother, Christine Jablonski, has served on both the Tingsboro Scholarship Trust Committee and the Grad Night Committee, both of which are not charged to use TPS facilities. After submitting an initial, an initial proposal of rental of space for next summer's show to Sharon Fairbanks, who has been unbelievably helpful with her communication and willingness to answer questions, we were discouraged by the proposed amount for using the space that rendered it cost prohibitive. With the involvement of so many Tingsboro students, we would like to approach the school committee with the hope to be considered amongst these community groups and revisit the policy on renting facilities so that we can foster a cooperative relationship with one another. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you. Thank you. Would anybody else like to speak during citizen time? Um, we'll take that back to our policy subcommittee. Um, moving on to correspondence, Dr. Flanagan. I'll just go at this time. Okay. And for personnel, we have notifications of new hires. We have Jennifer Farmping, a TES 1.0 special education teacher. Estasha Fernandez, a TES 1.0 paraprofessional. Hector Pena, a THS second shift custodian. 
Sam Richardson, a THS second shift custodian, Tina Rossetti, a THS second shift custodian. Uh, welcome to all of our new joiners. And for Share the Success, Nate. Yep, so at TES, they've had lots of smiles and fun on their new playgrounds, which just recently opened, I'm sure as you all know. <laughs> um, on behalf of the elementary school, they'd like to extend a special thank you to the Town of Tingsboro voters, Board of Selectmen, School Committee, Finance Committee, and members of the Capital Asset Management Committee for making this possible. Um, also make sure to check out TPS social media to see some pictures of the new playground. They posted some of those recently. So uh, this week students are enjoying a spirit week to kick off the annual coin drive for adopt a family. Um, tomorrow students are encouraged to dress as their desired occupation in the future. Uh, also the elementary school's next session of enrichment offerings will begin soon. They're excited to bring back TES Telegram, reading ambassadors and student council. Mrs. Bishop and Mrs. Correa will be offering new enrichment opportunities um, for students in kindergarten and grade one focused on SEL and play skills. At the middle school, staff had a focused or a good focused professional development day this past Tuesday. Uh, they led participated they led and participated in many learning opportunities. Um, Veterans Day observances took place last week. Eighth grade did a focus on the history and meaning of the holiday on Monday. And on Thursday, Ms. Craig welcomed Tingsboro residents who had served in our armed services to talk about their experiences and answer some questions. Um, TMS would like to thank all who have served and those willing to come in and talk to their students about it. Um, also, five seventh graders will be attending the Student Leadership Conference this Thursday to focus on leadership <coughs> and how they can come back to school and improve the culture of TMS. At the high school, theater arts students uh, recently held a fall review. Great job by all involved. 33 seniors were recently awarded the John and Abigail Adams Scholarship. Uh, this scholarship is a merit-based program that provides a credit toward tuition for up to eight semesters or undergraduate, um, or of undergraduate education, excuse me, at Massachusetts State College and Universities. The DECA Club attended the Massachusetts DECA Fall Leadership Conference at Bentley University. They prepare for the regional competition later this year. Congratulations to the cheer team. They placed second at the Division Three Central competition. Good luck at the state competition this weekend. Also, the um, boys cross country team placed second at the Division Three B championship. This is the highest finish in the boys program history, so congratulations to them. Um, and good luck to them at all states, at the all states meet this Saturday. Um, and lastly, congratulations to November students of the month, Nicholas Osiello, Yesenia Collins, Adam Durant, and Caroline Kenny. And that's it. Thanks, Dane. Thank you. Um, I will seek a motion to take 9A out of order. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? That carries 700. Uh, moving on to the first responders presentation. Chief, thank you for joining us today. I appreciate it. Yes. It's always great to hear from you. So I'm going to kick it off if that's okay. Sure. Yeah. So uh, I want to make sure that we don't stumble on this this week because we, str we struggled a couple weeks ago. But to start with what our true north is. And our true north is we value all people in our school community and we're committed to continuous growth. And I think when we talk about valuing people in our community, our school community, it starts with, starts with making sure that we have a safe learning environment for all of our students. And I'm really um, happy to report that Kingsborough Public Schools has a great relationship with our first responders, and they've been, um, in my experience so far this year, uh, amazing to work with. And so we have, uh, as you mentioned, Chief Russell here from the Kingsborough Fire Department today, but we, we were also expecting Chief Howe from the Kingsborough Police Department to be here, and, and I talked to him earlier today, and he's like, well, I'm kind of sick. And, um, but I'll come, I'll wear a mask, and I was like, why don't you just stay home? Like, we, we'll take care of this for you. Uh, the last thing we want is, you know, our, our chief of police, you know, not getting the rest he needs when, he, when he's not feeling well. So, um, so I appreciate you being here, chief, uh, and your willingness to be here. So I'll talk a little bit about our relationship with the police department so far this year and, and, and what we've been working on. Uh, specifically, uh, you know, if you have kids in the schools, you probably – you know, know that making sure that our emergency response protocols and procedures are in place. And so what we utilize here is, is a version of, you know, options-based protocols if we were to have an emergency situation. Uh, sometimes it's referred to as ALICE. You may, you may be familiar with that acronym. Uh, so the police, uh, including uh, Deputy Chief Woods and our SRO, uh, Bonsar, uh, have been really instrumental in helping us and working with the admin in each school to not only talk about what that looks like, but plan our scenarios and be present at each of those so that 
when they walk through, they can, you know, see how it's going and then be there at a staff meeting to, you know, talk about how it went and, you know, revisit what the drill was with our staff, answer questions and so on. So we can continue to grow in our ability to, you know, be really successful at that, obviously. Hopefully we never need to use it, but if we ever need to use it, we want to be prepared. Um, there are more drills planned for uh, further along this year. And uh, we've been working collaboratively, and Chief Russell will talk a little bit about uh, our monthly meetings that we've been having uh, to, to strengthen our procedures. One really special event that's happening uh, this Friday at the high school. If you've seen SRL Bonsar, you usually see her with her companion, our comfort dog, George. George is turning four this week. We're having a birthday party for George, and several of his comfort dog friends from surrounding communities are coming to the party and so this also kind of coincides with the end of the trimester here at the high school which can be a really stressful time for our kids you know um, we try not to emphasize you know grades at all costs but you know it is a stressful time and so having uh, a party of comfort dogs here on Friday before the Thanksgiving break is uh, is going to be a nice thing for our kids and if you walk around the building you'll see a couple flyers for that so that will be available. Uh, but I'm going to kick it over to Chief Russell now, and he's, he can talk a little bit about the fire department and, and their collaboration with us and what we've also been working uh, collaboratively with building administrators, the police department, and the fire department uh, since this summer. So, Chief. Sure. Uh, Wes Russell. I'm the fire chief and the town's emergency management director, and uh, uh, I'm excited to be, you know, part of this team that Mr. Woodlock has to uh, take a look at the school's emergency response plans and uh, identify some opportunities to kind of enhance those plans. I think that, uh, as we know, the world uh, has evolved quite a bit in the last two or three years, and uh, I think that uh, it's, you know, a good time to take a look and see how our emergency response plans are evolving along with the, the, uh, the situations that we may be facing. Um, so uh, I also, uh, you know, we work great, you know, with uh, Chief Howe and uh, Chief Woods and the uh, SROs. I'm uh, looking to, you know, have the fire department also be uh, part of that team. We're certainly going to be part of a team that responds to emergencies here. So uh, I think it makes sense for all to, us to uh, play a role in that planning process. Um, so I think that, you know, things are definitely moving in a good direction. We've been meeting on a reg regular basis, you know, I think. In our initial meeting, we were kind of, you know, geez, should we meet every two or three months? And I think we quickly realized that, uh, you know, we need to, we found some areas where we can start working and we, we need to meet more regularly, at least in the beginning. And then hopefully have a plan that we can, we'll just be maintaining and uh, meeting uh, less regularly. Um, and that's, you know, and I, and I, I think that'll continue to grow. We've uh, also talked about, you know, how we do fire drills in the in the schools and maybe enhancing some of those to be a little more realistic uh, without being too challenging and you know hoping to better prepare the students we're going to be doing some uh, safety walkthroughs with the um, fire prevention and school administration in the schools to uh, proactively identify things that we can do to uh, just make the school a safer situation if there is a rapid evacuation or something like that. So I think uh, I'm, I'm really excited to be part of the team. If I just add one thing, I think, uh, you know, we bring it up at the school building committee meetings, and I try to bring it up at these meetings, but just so you know, Chief Russell and Chief Howe are also integral in the development of a new middle school. They've been mm -hmm. on the Zoom calls with us to talk about the design, to talk about the alarm system, to talk about blind spots, to talk about everything in the design of the new school. Additionally, Chief Russell and Chief Howe uh, and Deputy Chief Woods were here, actually Deputy Chief Sands, or Assistant Chief, I forget. Assistant Chief. Assistant Chief Sands uh, were here last week as... Uh, left field and JCJ came out and talked about the fencing staging and what the impact to fire and police would be. So uh, they are really taking a hands-on approach with the development of the new school as well. So we thank you for your time with that as well. Appreciate it. You know, I, I see this as one of the most important thing, parts of my job, really. I mean, we have a sizable school population and, you know, it's, a, it's an important uh, part of our planning. Does anybody on the committee have any questions for uh, Chief Russell? I did. 
Thanks for coming tonight. It's, I love hearing from you know the different groups in town. Um, as you walk around the schools and the campuses, you know we're going to be coming up on budget season soon. Is there anything you see that we may need to consider as we get ready for next year's budget? You don't have to answer that now. You know, you can get back to this. <laughs> so, yeah, find more storage space. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know that's uh, every administrator's. Uh, I I have a uh, significant part of my career was in hospital emergency planning and storage spaces. Is always a challenge and so when you can't store things where does it end up in the way right in the hallways and stuff and that's that's one of the things that um, we're gonna kind of proactively look at is how to keep the hallways and exit ways safe on a continually basis and it's a I know I it's a challenge you know uh, you know whenever and hopefully in the new middle school I mean that's you know when we talk about potentially uh, a new public safety building that you know we keep reminding them we need pl we need places to store things they can't just be piling up in the hallways, but um, uh, no, I say just uh, put faith in your team, and I think that uh, as we move forward, uh, you know, maybe that team will grow, and to have some uh, other people in the school that are using the plan as opposed to just administering a plan, you know, be part of the process, you know. But budget-wise, uh, yeah, I, I don't have any uh, specific suggestions, no. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Thank you for coming tonight, Chief Russell. Um, Very welcome. Also, Anytime. thank you for all the time. I, I want to echo what Dr. Flanagan said, for all the time that you're putting into this middle school project. You know, on top of your regular job that you put in tr a tremendous amount of um, work. This and as you mentioned, I lean on Assistant Chief Sands heavily when it comes to the building stuff. So. Yeah, okay. Well, thanks mm -hmm. to Assistant Chief okay. Sands as well. <laughs> I pre appreciate it. And thank you for coming tonight. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chief. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, moving on to item number seven, which is subcommittee update. We will defer that to 9B, um, where Capital Asset will provide an update. And for unfinished business, uh, teaching and learning, Mr. Woodlock. Okay. Thank you. So uh, one of the things we really wanted to spotlight uh, as part of our SDI and efforts in our teaching and learning environment are just you know, some of the things that are happening already at uh, our various schools. And this is really just a quick spotlight and it doesn't um, demonstrate the, the scope of what's going on. But we wanted to highlight some really amazing things that are happening in each of our schools. And so with our curriculum council team and discussions that we've had over the past week with that group of teacher leaders, in addition to feedback that I've received from the principals, um, we just, we're gonna highlight a few teachers, but again, I wanna say this, this isn't everyone. So um, at Tingsboro Elementary School, uh, we're giving a bit of a shout out to Allie Bishop, who's a first grade teacher. And Allie has really been focused on the planning aspect of being uh, inclusive in her classroom. She is already very inclusive. She's a very progressive teacher, a wonderful teacher, but she's trying to get even better, which is what we want from our teachers. So she's been working and taking a real collaborative approach, working with um, English learning teachers, working with paraprofessionals, reading specialists, uh, service providers, to really try and look at her lessons from the outset and, and what barriers might exist for students in her classrooms. Um, traditionally, you know, we set up classrooms and we create a lesson and then we backpedal when we need to to meet the needs of various students. She's trying to be really proactive about that, and she's, she's bringing a lot of people into the fold, and it's been working really well. So we wanted to commend her on that. Katie Leahy is one of our teacher leaders at the middle school, and she's taken it uh, upon herself in her meetings with uh, her fellow teachers to really look at, like, what are we doing for our inclusive practice? And so she's been kind of modeling, like, let's have discussions about this. And we, one of the things we talk about with our teachers is, the best professional development is right here in our schools. So as an administrator, the first thing I noticed when I, when I became an administrator, when I got to walk into all of the different classrooms, was how much great teaching there was. And when we're teachers in the classroom, you're, it's not that you're alone, but you're almost in a silo, and you don't get to see all the great things that are happening. So Katie really wanted to say, like, what are we doing? We're trying to be more inclusive. What have you tried? And so she's hosting those conversations, and, and she's, they're learning from each other, which is a really great model for our students. And um, at the high school, we, wanted, uh, we had a meeting here with some of our teacher leaders, and um, Betsy Spear, who is one of our social studies teachers, talked about 
you know, her um, first challenges with an advanced placement class. And you may think like, oh, if they're AP students, they're all like amazing students and they all have no problem with school, but that's really not the case. Um, and they all have different, you know, skills that need to be developed. They have strengths and weaknesses like any other student. And so you can't just go in there teaching an advanced placement class you know, it's kind of prescriptive because you are teaching to a test, which is not what we really love to do. But she's found ways to really provide a lot of options for students to access information. In, in advanced placement U.S. history, some of the material is really dense, really difficult, and not all students are ready to take that in. So she's really tried to find options for students to access materials in different ways so that they will be able to um, be there when it's time for AP testing. So um, I wanted to just say thank you to those teachers who are kind of going the extra mile. And again, this is a re representative group of our whole staff uh, that are that are taking um, are making efforts to be more inclusive in all that they do. Or they've already been really inclusive, and now they're actually talking about it and sharing it out. Um, and I think that's how we all get better. So. Uh, so I want to say thank you to our teachers for doing a great job. <coughs> we'll move on to the building update. I feel like I'm getting off easy tonight. There's really not much of an update. Okay. Our meeting for Monday was canceled about the color palette. Um, that's got pushed till next week. Uh, I do know that the original color palette that was discussed for the school were the theme was uh, the four seasons. Um, so I'll learn more about that mm -hmm. um, when the time comes. Uh, not necessarily my forte, but I uh, will figure it out. So that meeting got moved to next Monday, the 21st. We do have a school building committee meeting scheduled for November 30th. Uh, and in my most recent uh, communication with uh, our OPM, David Sander from Left Field, we are on track still for a first week or early December submission of the detailed design to the MSBA for approval. So uh, we continue to plug along with paperwork. They continue to plug along. They've had some successful meetings with uh, CONCOM. And I know that they have a whole schedule. They're working with the town uh, and building inspector uh, Paul Welcome and, and Matt Hansen to really map out what all the permitting processes will be. So uh, we're, we're moving right along in the right direction here. All right, great. Um, any questions for Mr. Woodlock on the curriculum assessment update or um, Dr. Flanagan on the TMS building project? Is there a deadline in December or is that just when we're going to be ready? That's when we're going to be ready. Okay. Great. Um, just to go back to 8A, uh, Mr. Woodlock, thanks for, yeah. you know, speaking on um, some of the specifics of the different classrooms. You know, we're all here for the kids, and it's nice to hear uh, different angles on what's going on the, in the classroom, so great to hear that. Um, 9B, Capital Asset, who's providing that update? I will, Madam okay. Chair. Um, capital Asset met this evening. We have to uh, put in our recommendations. Um, we, we will be recommending to the whole committee. Um, Pierce Field uh, upgrades the scoreboard and the sound system. If you've been to any of the sporting events out there, you will see that our scoreboard uh, does not work. Um, a lot of times the clock will read 8888 because all the lights are broken. Um, the sound system is getting, uh, it's, 10, 12 years old, it's horrible. Um, purchased, I believe, in 2011. Um, so we'll be looking for 45,000 for the new Pierce Field upgrades for the scoreboard and um, sound system. And then the Tingsboro Elementary School elevator repair. It's 150,000, we've put it off for the last two years. Um, this needs to get done, so. What's, um, if you don't mind me asking, yes. the elevator repair, do, does the elevator not work right now? Are they, we unable to use it? What's, what's going on? It's currently now? working. However, could stop working at any time. Um, we've, Dr. Flanagan might be able to give us a better explanation. Or so Mr. Messina has Mr. the issue on it. So, so yes, that's, that is the, um, <clears throat> the front elevator as you come into the building. Um, We've replaced the jack on that, but this is the additional um, additional repairs that need to be done. Um, Buckley Elevator that's come in has assesses our elevators on a 
on a semi-annual basis to, to review them. And this is an item they've targeted and we've essentially told them at this point, you gotta keep it working. We have to do, even if it's piecemeal, to find parts and everything to keep it working. But this, this is the overhaul that Buckley Elevator actually said we needed to have done last year. So it's, it's an item that got pushed off when the playground got moved up um, to, to both phases at once. Uh, the Capital Asset Committee for the town pushed uh, the elevator repair as well as the bleachers into um, this year. <clears throat> Great, thank you for that. So the Capital Asset um, Group We'll be looking for a motion to approve those two items, the Pierce Field upgrade scoreboard and sound system for 45000 and the Tingsboro Elementary School elevator repair for 150000 Would anybody like to make that motion? I'll make the motion. Second. Is there any discussion? I just want to say I support both. Um, Pierce Field, I've been to several games there, and... It's frustrating when you can't see what's going on because the scoreboard's not working. And, I, you know, I've had the question come to me, or more so the comment come to me as a parent, not as a school committee member of what's going on with the scoreboard. Did they just not want to run it tonight? Um, so it's noticed by um, people in, from Tingsboro. It's noticed by visitors. Um, and our students put a lot into their athletics. Uh, so it would be nice to have a work. <clears throat> um, we also rent this out to, if I may, we also rent this out um, to adult programs and other organizations. So having that scoreboard for them when they rent it would be uh, very helpful as well. Christine? From a group in town that I'm a part of, the girls softball program, which won the states a couple years ago, um, they are actively right now fundraising to be able to buy their own scoreboard for the field. So it's I think it would be hard to say that one sports teams in the in the district are more important than others when there's a sports team who is looking to fundraise to buy their own, and we're going to fund and repair one that is there. Do you see where I'm going? So it's kind of a little unfair and... Where's the scoreboard for the girls? The girls' softball team is right now fundraising to, to find and purchase a scoreboard. For the elementary school? For the elementary okay. school, yes. So I think it, it wouldn't be necessarily fair in some respects where you have, you know, one team getting a repaired and one doesn't even have any and are actively fundraising and coming up with strategies on how to come up with the money for it. Well, I think Pierce Field covers more than one team. Oh, it covers several okay. teams. And more than one sport. And more than one sport, yeah. So, I mean, we, we have That's the football, the soccer, soccer lacrosse. football, lacrosse, field hockey. I'm just giving feedback yeah. on how I know that people yeah. might perceive that. Sure. So, my daughter plays softball, obviously. I'm very invested in the softball program. I don't know if the softball group has ever come before the school committee requesting a school board. Have you? I'm not find? aware. That they have. I don't know if they know that they can. And that's where I'm just yeah. presenting that yeah. other Yeah, I, th I think it's something we should look at, you know, for the future also is <laughs> I never even realized, it didn't dawn on me that that should be a need. Um, I think baseball and softball scoreboards are usually much smaller and a little less low key than football scoreboards, sure. um, just by their nature. So I think there's probably something we can do over there that's cheaper than this. Um, mm -hmm. But that still doesn't take away the need for the scoreboard. No, um, it doesn't. I, I, and so I've, in mind, I've watched many a sports games at that, and it's great having the scoreboard. And I would absolutely support it, just like I would absolutely support a scoreboard for yeah. all the other sports in town. No, I agree. I, I think so it's something we can... It's not something I'm against. I'm just... Yeah. But there's, there's no scoreboard over there at all on the elementary school grounds. And we have more I than... I don't think so. We have more I than never just really a softball over there. Yeah. Softball, baseball, um, soccer, lacrosse. Soccer. Soccer. Yeah. Lacrosse plays there. Well, youth football has a field over there. I think, I don't know if they have Soccer plays there. there. Soccer plays, yeah. So it, soccer plays it most of their games there. Looking into a scoreboard that would fit yep. it's, uh, yeah, several it, different sports over there. The other component to think of is, is games that are, uh, or, or sports that are contingent upon time. Right, mm -hmm. you need the running time, right. uh, which baseball and softball obviously don't have. But uh, certainly if we're going to do it somewhere, it could absolutely mm -hmm. be looked at everywhere yeah 
Um, but I, I do not know. I mean, Mrs. Palumbo has not had this conversation or, or come forward with this. I'm not even sure she's aware. She might not be. I, I, I just know that right now that that is what the softball team is actively fundraising for, okay. where we're strategizing. We created a nonprofit. And yeah, it's probably worth having a conversation, and it may make sense to wait until the softball field at the middle school is done. And, mm -hmm. Or does that come out of the school board? Well, I think we're getting a little off target because we're talking about the capital asset plan right now and really finding an initiative for the capital right. asset plan. Right. Yeah. You know, if this yes. is an FY 24 budget discussion, we can have that conversation too in the athletic budget. Mm -hmm. So it's certainly something that we will follow up with Ms. Palomo and, and come back to the committee with. Yeah. More information. Mm -hmm. Are there any further um, comments or discussion about the capital asset plan as proposed? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? That carries 700. Thank you, Thank everyone. You. Mr. McMahon and Mr. Messina play a big role in that as well. So, right. Well, thank like you. To both. thank them. Thank you. Uh, moving on to finance, Mr. Messina. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, for signing of bills, there were nine bill warrants presented to the committee tonight. I do have them all back approved. In your drive, as always, is the list of warrant numbers, accounts, and amounts. And for signing of payroll, since we last reviewed payroll, there were. Um, two pay dates, the pay date of October 24th, as well as the pay date of November 7th. And again, in your drive is the list of warrant numbers and amounts for payroll. And that is it tonight. Um, and school committee discussion. Nate, did you have anything? Nothing at this time. Jeff? Um, nothing. Thank you. Esteem? I just want to congratulate the high school athletes that I'm starting to see getting signed to teams. And it's just exciting to see them getting ready for their next phase and thank the chief of the fire department for coming in and chatting with us. It's always nice to hear what's going on on that other end. Thanks, Jesse. Mr. Woodlock? I'm fine, thank you. Mr. Messina? I'm all set, thank you. Rob? Last week, uh, I had the pleasure of attending the high school's uh, theater group's fall review. Uh, the kids did a wonderful job. Um, presenting songs from uh, many different uh, plays. Um, not sure which ones they're planning on uh, presenting this coming year, but uh, any one of them would have been one, would be wonderful to see. Uh, it, it was great, uh, great seeing them uh, come out and do such a fabulous job. Uh, other than that, I am all set. Thank you. Great, thanks Rob. Danielle? Just, I would be <clears throat> remiss if I did not thank everybody involved in the TES playgrounds on behalf of my children tonight who asked me to do so. So a uh, lot of excitement over at TES about those playgrounds. So thank you to all involved in getting, making those happen. Brian? Uh, thank you, Ms. McDonough, for coming and speaking tonight. Um, I always enjoy when citizens come and speak to us. I don't think we get enough visitors. Um, so thank you for that. Um, glad to hear the playgrounds open and good for those kids. I want to thank Chief Russell for coming out. Um, I think it's important to maintain those relationships with our first responders, and I hope Chief I was feeling better. Thank you. I'll echo all their comments and uh, wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. Enjoy your families. Dr. Flanagan. Ryan, thank you for coming out tonight. I really appreciate it. Um, so next week you'll probably get an email from me talking about how you'll learn about notifications for two-hour delays and or cancellations. I'm hopeful that we don't drop below 32 degrees tonight and then we can have just rain in the morning but uh, we'll be up early checking the weather forecast but uh, as always look to social media and look at your email because that's where you'll be notified first about cancellations and delays <laughs> great thank you is the text message still working it is okay okay i guess we're on that season now uh, yeah. <laughs> faster than expected yeah uh chief russell and how thank you both for coming and um to your departments for all the work that you put in supporting our school community um, as well as our school building um, project. Um, thank you to our community members for speaking tonight. Um, as Ryan said, we really love to hear from our community members. Um, and while we don't typically comment back, um, we do take the feedback and um, discuss it within um, subcommittee if there's, um, you know, if it relates to a specific subcommittee um, and we'll provide that feedback. Um, and with that, we do not have any need for executive session, so I'll seek a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? That carries 7-0-0. We're adjourned. Thank you.